Good morning, Banyan Creek, and welcome to the student announcements. Before we get started with the news, let's all stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may now be seated. Now on to our weather and lunch menu. Thank you, Vangeline, and good morning. The current temperature is 70 degrees, and the high will be 86 degrees. Also, there is a slight chance of rain, plus very warm and humid. The cafeteria will be serving Caribbean chicken with brown rice, mini cheese pizza bagels, winter salad with savory wheat crackers, turkey and cheese sandwich, second bread beans, and fresh baby carrots. Now to Juliana to receive our sports update. Thank you, Alice. Last night in the NHL, the Penguins destroyed the Senators 7-3. The Canadians win against the Islanders 6-2. And in the NBA, the Warriors defeated the Nuggets 100-116. The Spurs take home a tight win against the Hornets 104-103. And, and the Nets beat the Celtics in overtime 120-129. Now let's go back to our main desk to receive history. On this day in history, in the year 1789, the Constitution of the United States went into effect. In 1791, Vermont became the 14th state in the United States. In 1861, Abraham Lincoln was inaugurated as president. In 1917, Jeanette Rankin took her seat as the first woman elected to the House of Representatives. And lastly, in 1933, Frances Perkins, appointed Secretary of Labor, became the first woman to serve in the cabinet. Now Martin for birthdays. Thank you, Evangeline. <clears throat> on this day in history, on March 4th, <clears throat> in, 19, in 1678, Antonio Vivaldi, the composer, was born. Also, in 1982, Landon Donovan, the soccer player, was born. Lastly, today is our co-sports Juliana's birthday. Don't forget to wish her a happy birthday. Now to the quote of the day. How like an, how like an angel came I down by Thomas Traherne. Now to top stories. Hooray for Diffin Dufer Day. A variety of teachers will be doing a special recording today for this awesome book. The video will be shown after the morning announcements. The book for this day is Wacky Wednesday. So show your spirit and wear wacky patterns. Tomorrow is Thursday. The Ben Carson room will be stocked with a book cart full of Dr. Seuss books. Stop by tomorrow and read your favorite book. The book for tomorrow is Cat in the Hat. So show your spirit and wear your favorite hat. Also, every Friday there will be a surprise in a limited number of bags. Remember to buy your bag for a chance to win a raffle ticket. Also, congratulations. The, follow, the following classes have won an eye ready monster on the shelf based on their performance from last week. Congratulations, Miss Cole, Miss Tambori, Miss Pierre, Miss Arena, Miss Sagain, Miss Stewart, and Mr. Lewert. Also, purchase your 2019 through 2020 Banyan Creek Elementary School yearbook. It's only $30 and don't miss the deadline, March 20th, 2020. You can order it online at one at yearbookordercenter.com. The order code is 19944. Also, fifth graders, your yearbook cover submissions should be into Miss Gallo by now. Attention students, if you show your school spirit during Dr. Seuss Week, the fine arts team has prizes for us all. That's all the announcements we have for this morning. Have, have a, a great, great day. day. Bye. Bye. I've always lived in Dinkerville. My friends all live here too. We go to Diffin for school. We're happy that we do. Our school is at the corner of Dink Zuber and Dink Zot. It looks like any other school but we suspect it's not. I think we're learning lots of things not taught at other schools. Our teachers are remarkable. They make up their own rules. 
Miss Bubble Titch is listening. Miss Wobble Titch is smelling. Miss Fribble Titch is laughing. And Miss Squibble Titch is yelling. Miss Twinning Titch is tying knots in neckerchiefs and noodles and how to tell chrysanthemums from miniature poodles. Miss Vining teaches all the ways a pigeon may be peppered and how to put a saddle on a lizard or leopard. My teacher is Miss Bonkers. She's as bouncy as a flea. I'm not certain what she teaches, but I'm glad she teaches me. Look, look, she chirps, I'll show you how to tell a cactus from a cow. And then I shall instruct you why a hippo cannot hope to fly. She even teaches frogs to dance and pigs to put on underpants. One day she taught a duck to sing. Miss Bonkers teaches everything. Of all the teachers in our school, I like Miss Bonkers best. Our teachers are all different, but she's differenter than the rest. We also have a principal. His name is Mr. Lowe. He is the very saddest man that any of us know. He mumbles, are they learning this and that and such and such? His face is wrinkled as a prune from worrying so much. He breaks a lot of pencil points from pushing down too hard. And many dogs start barking as he mopes around the yard. We think he wears false eyebrows. In fact, we're sure it's so. We've heard he takes them off at night. I guess we'll never know. But we know he likes Miss Bonkers. He treats her like a queen. He's always there to watch her when she's on her trampoline. There are many other people who make Diff and Doofer run. They are utterly amazing. I love every single one. Our nurse, Miss Clot, knows what to do. When we've got sniffles or the flu, one day I had a splinter, so she bandaged me from head to toe. Mr. Plunger, our custodian, has fashioned a machine, a super, zooper, flooper do. It keeps the whole school clean. Our music teacher, Mrs. Fox, makes bagpipes out of straws and socks. Our art instructor, Mr. Bees, paints pictures hanging by his knees. In science class with Mr. Katz, we learn to build robotic rats. In gym, we watch as Mr. Bear hoists elephants into the air. Miss Loon, our librarian, she hides behind the shelves and often cries out louder when we're reading to ourselves. We have three cooks, all named McMunch, who merrily prepare our lunch. They make us hot dogs, beans, and fries, plus things we do not recognize. And as they cook, they sing their song, not too short and not too long. Roast and toast and slice and dice, cooking lunch is oh so nice. We were eating their concoctions, telling jokes and making noise. When Mr. Lau appeared and howled, attention girls and boys. He began to fuss and fidget, scratch and mutter, sneeze and cough. He shook his head so hard we thought his eyebrows would come off. He wrung his hands, he cleared his throat, he shed a single tear, then sobbed. I have something to announce and that is why I'm here. All schools for miles and miles around must take a special test to see who's learning such and such, to see which school's the best. If our small school does not do well, then it will be torn down, and you will have to go to school in dreary Flobbertown. Not Flobbertown, we shouted, and we shuddered at the name, for everyone in Flobbertown does everything the same. It's miserable in Flabbertown. They dress in just one style. They sing one song. They never dance. They march in single file. They do not have a playground. They do not have a park. Their lunches have no taste at all. Their dogs are scared to bark. Miss Bonkers rose. Don't fret, she said. You've learned the things you need. 
To pass that test and many more, I'm certain you'll succeed. We've taught you that the earth is round, that red and white make pink, and something else that matters more, we've taught you how to think. I hope you're right, sighed Mr. Lowe. Sh he shed another tear. The test is in 10 minutes, and you're taking it right here. We sat in shock and disbelief. Oh no, we moaned, oh no. We were even more unhappy than unhappy Mr. Lowe. But then the test was handed out. Yahoo, we yelled, yahoo, for it was filled with all the things that we all knew we knew. There were questions about noodles, about poodles, frogs, and yelling, about listening and laughing, and chrysanthemums and smelling. There were questions about other things we'd never seen or heard, and yet we somehow answered them, enjoying every word. One week later, after recess, Mr. Lowe meandered in. We'd never seen him smile before, but now he wore a grin. He soon began to giggle. Then his giggle grew by half. And then it really happened. Mr. Lowe began to laugh. You've saved our school, you've saved our school, he jubilantly roared. We got the very highest score, he wrote on the board. Miss Bonkers did some cartwheels till her face turned cherry red. She bounded up to Mr. Lowe and kissed him on the head. Hooray, hooray, she shouted. I'm so proud I cannot speak. So she did another cartwheel and she pecked him on the cheek. Ahem, ahem, coughed Mr. Lowe. You all deserve a bow. I thus declare a holiday. It starts exactly now. Because you've done so splendidly in every sort of way, this day shall forever be known as Dippendorfer Day. And furthermore, I promise, I won't ever wear a frown, for now I know we'll never go to dreary Flobber Town. Then we held a celebration. There was pizza, milk, and cake. Like everyone, I ate too much and got a bellyache. We laughed and hooped and hollered the entire school day long. Then we all sang triumphantly the Diff and Doofer song. We love you Diff and Doofer school, we definitely do. There surely is no other school that's anything like you. You're gribulous, you're grobulous, each day we love you more. You are the school we treasure and unceasingly adore. Oh, fine, a school in Dinkerville, the only one as well. We love your diff and do for school much more than we can tell. You are so diff and do for us, it gives us joy to say. Three cheers for diff and do for school. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Hooray!